If I had to select 10 high-end fragrances from my collection and throw out the rest, what would they be? Part two of the Toss Out the Rest tag series. If you haven't seen my designer version of this list, you can watch it in the cards up top. Links also below. But the royal family wanted to see my niche selections as well. Surprisingly, comprising this list was much easier than the designer one. But instead of setting a limit of one fragrance per house, I capped it at two. Now some of these you might see coming, but others, maybe not. The number 10 niche fragrance I would keep is Jubilation 25 by Amouage. Being a fragrance collector, it'd be a shame for me not to keep one that is of a Middle Eastern style. Although Jubilation 25 has Oud, which is one of the prominent fragrance notes of the Middle East, I love it because of its fruitiness. Now it does smell like dried fruit because the fruitiness is combined with a bit of an incense quality and some oud and woodsiness. So it does have a lot of character to it. A nice thing about Jubilation Man is I find it works in warmer weather too. One or two sprays, mind you, but I've got compliments wearing this in the day in the late spring. Most people assume it's just a nighttime fragrance, but if you go to the Middle East, people wear oud in the high summer heat over there, so <laughs> it's not too crazy. I have it at number 10 because the other nine will just be more well-liked by more people while still being really appreciated by me. Number 10. My boy Jubs. At number nine, we have my favorite smelling Creed fragrance, Original Santal. This was the first Creed fragrance that I smelt. It was the first one that I bought. It is a unique sweet fragrance that has this beautiful blast of a berry-like sweetness with just a touch of the Creed Ambergris to balance it out a little bit. It's quite interesting because it is so sweet of a fragrance yet it still has a bit of versatility to it. This is not a fragrance that I would only wear at nighttime in the cold. It feels a bit clean rather than being overly, overly sweet. Bit of a disclaimer, Mont Blanc's Individual, which came out before Original Santel, smells similar. But the reason this made it to my keep list is the same reason that I invest in niche fragrances, period. Although not the greatest value all the time, it really just comes down to this smell and I absolutely love the smell. To me, it's worth the heftier price tag for the way heftier enjoyment. Number nine, original Santal. At number eight is my summer beast from Zerjoff, Renaissance. Renaissance has my favorite use of the note mint. It is a minty citrus fragrance with a woody dry down that performs very, very well in the summer. Renaissance does things a little bit differently, which is a big part of niche fragrances. It's a niche, which isn't fulfilled by a lot of other fragrances. I have that number eight because there are other fragrances that I just enjoy the smell of more. While this dominates fresh fragrances in the performance category, there are others that I just prefer the smell of when I wear them. Just barely. At number eight, Renaissance. My number seven niche fragrance to keep for life is Eau Duel EDP by Diptyque. Eau Duel EDP is my overall favorite masculine vanilla fragrance. The vanilla note in here is so delicious, but what makes this fragrance amazing for guys is its citrus opening. It's a perfect balance of zest and sweetness. It starts off really energetic for that go-getter dude, but then once it settles down, once you start settling down as a human being, it smooths out and it's this delectable buttery vanilla that just lingers on for many hours. For a niche fragrance, diptyques are fairly reasonable priced. The reason I have it at number seven is because although this is a masculine vanilla, vanilla is still a pretty feminine note for the most part. So thinking of the rest of my life, I would only save this for special occasions. At number seven, Eau Duel EDP. At number six, another surprise. Aqua de Parma, Cedro de Taromina. I think Aqua de Parma is the king of niche fresh fragrances. Although Creed makes some incredible fresh fragrances, that's kind of all Aqua de Parma does, and they do it very well. The Blue Mediterranean line focuses on the Mediterranean. Fragrances that you'd wear by the sea, by the beautiful blue water, and they all have a focus on a certain note. This one is cedar-based. 
but it's dominated by beautiful, natural, authentic citrus. Grapefruit orange combination mixed with a spicy cedar creates a beautiful, masterful blend. While Bergamotto de Calabria and Arancia de Capri, they do a great job showcasing citruses. This one wins it for me because of its blend. It's incorporation of the awesome Aqua de Parma citrus and cedar and spiciness. There's a lot to this fragrance. It smells magnificent. It truly is a masterpiece. And if you like the Aqua de Parma line and you haven't tried this, you should totally just Stevie Wonder this bottle, dude. It just misses the top five because although the performance is very good for a fresh fragrance, it's not as good as my other fragrances. And performance means something. And number six, Cedro de Taromina. Snaking its way into the top five is from Parfums de Marly and it's none other than Leighton. Leighton is one of the most mass appealing niche fragrances in my collection. With a main note of apple and there's some vanilla and some spicy cardamom. It is a huge compliment getting fragrance that is loaded with sweet notes but has just enough fresh bite to it to allow it to be worn in the warmer weather as well. Leighton does have a newer brother called Leighton Exclusif which I almost put on this list because of its opulence. But just like in my Leighton Leighton Exclusif battle, I gave the edge to the original just because I can wear it in many more circumstances. The versatility is much higher on the original, even though the cold weather suits the exclusive version much, much better. The only reason I have it at number five is because to some people, it doesn't necessarily smell all that niche. Some people say it's a bit too mass appealing, which doesn't make sense to me, but that's what they say. And number five, Leighton. My number four niche fragrance that I would keep Another Aqua de Parma from the ingredient line, Colonia Intensa Oud. What's incredible about the dark brown bottle ingredient line of Aqua de Parma fragrances is all the ingredients they've chosen to showcase are exclusively cold weather ingredients. We're talking ebony, oud, leather, amber, vanilla. But in true Aqua de Parma fashion, these are fragrances that are meant for the Mediterranean, for the warmer weather, and sure enough, Colonia Intensa Oud has Oud, but I can wear it in the summer, no problem at all. Colonia Intensa Oud has that brand new fresh leather that's also in the leather version of this line, but it also has a nice amount of this pleasant sweet Oud that makes it one of the most unique freshies I've ever smelled. I'm going to say this is the best performing Aqua de Parma fragrance there is. Longevity on my skin has been 16 hours at one point, and the projection is six to seven hours. I wear this in the heat all the time, but I do not apply it like your standard fresh fragrance. Don't give it four or five sprays, guys. Give it one or two, and I promise you it'll perform well. I have it at number four because oud fragrances aren't necessarily for everybody. This one is for me, but uh, not everyone passing by is gonna love this because they probably have bad taste. Number four, Colonia Intensa Oud. My number three niche fragrance to keep is the King, Creed Aventus. It absolutely works in every situation you can think of. Casual, formal, indoor, outdoor, summer, winter, under spray, over spray. It smells so good that there has been an entire separate market in the fragrance community devoted to replicating it. Who would have thought that smoke and pineapple would work. The reason it's number three though is because it's not all that unique anymore, which blows my mind considering how expensive this is. But for anyone who knows this fragrance and has tried it, they're gonna want it. And when it comes to a niche fragrance, I do wanna stand out a little bit. Number three, Aventus. The number two niche fragrance that I will keep is Naxos by Zerichel. Hmm, not number one, eh? Naxos is my favorite fragrance. I'm obsessed with this. A wonderful honey tobacco fragrance done perfectly. It has one of the most breathtaking dry downs I've ever smelt. The scent cloud it produces is incredible. The performance here is nearly godlike on my skin. And it's a smell that I know I will never get tired of. Yes, there is a designer fragrance that smells very similar, but like original Centel, Naxos is just totally worth the extra jump in price for me. 
The reason my baby didn't get the top spot though is this is a fragrance that I would only wear in the evening or in the cold weather, which leaves out a lot of opportunities to potentially wear this. Opportunities my number one fragrance is totally usable in. And number two, Naxos. The number one niche fragrance that I wouldn't dare toss out is Imitation Man by Amalage. For me, Imitation has it all. It is a unique fragrance, it is a versatile fragrance, it's masculine, and my girlfriend absolutely loves it. Ever since I picked up this exclusive Herod's purchase, I cannot stop wearing it. I feel like it's the fragrance that I always wanted. Imitation Man has quickly become my signature scent. It doesn't matter where I am, what time it is, I would happily wear this, no questions asked. It's a fragrance that completely elevates my mood and transforms me into an even better version of myself. And that's a lot for just a little bottle of fragrance. There's also something to be said about the gold accents and the crown on top because it does make me feel like royalty after all. It transports me to a wonderful time in my life that I truly do cherish, which is why I will continue to cherish this fragrance. Number one, Imitation Man. This list is not a niche blind buy guide for you fragrance newbies out there. This is simply the 10 fragrances in my niche collection that I value above all else. I also wanna mention that I purposely did not include any Tom Ford private blends or Chanel or Dior exclusive lines because I don't want the fragrance nerds to be butthurt considering they're not technically niche, even though they're expensive as hell. But truly speaking, Amouage, Zerjoff, Creed, Aqua de Parma, these are all amazing niche houses that I love to collect and I have a pretty large collection of them. But of all of them, these are the ones that stand out to me. These are the ones I don't wanna let go. So don't make me. But as usual, uh, this was just an expression of my opinion on these fragrances. So if you have a differing opinion, I don't care. But it's good that you have your own opinion, so. Well, that was fun. If you haven't seen my designer version of this list, you can click the link right here in that rectangle. And there's some other content that you can check out too. You're welcome.